Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma dhara habita fillah. There was a beautiful question asked, which is very important for us to take time out and see if we can derive benefit from the questioner's uh, very beneficial question that they required clarification about something that I said. So they said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for the lectures you are giving. I mean, brother, what I'd like to know, if a sister who covers herself and prays five times a day and fasts gives charity to, but she doesn't have any knowledge about Islam uh, because of the life she went through since she was uh, young or 16, but she always believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and she wants to marry a brother who is... Uh, a Salafi and who will take her closer to Islam and make her strong in her deen and Iman. Now what I want to know, shouldn't that sister have a chance to come to Islam by following the Quran and the Sunnah by marrying a brother who is Salafi? And is that true that a Salafi, that Salafi brothers shouldn't marry a girl who isn't a Salafi even though she wants to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and become a Salafi? I feel that's not fair. If the sister who wants to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and wants to become a Salafi, but the Salafi brothers want, won't marry her, uh, won't marry her. Brother, I want to know where does it say that the brothers shouldn't marry a girl who doesn't have knowledge about Islam, even though she wants to become a better person, and yet she does her five daily prayers and fast and give charity whenever she can. I'll be grateful. I, I will be grateful if you can let me know, please. So a beautiful question uh, in relation to uh, what we discussed before. Someone asked about marrying a non selfie sister. And so what was said before, and so this is for clarification, is not that it's a prohibition, that it's haram. You can No one can say that. No, no one has that, that right necessarily to say that it's haram if it is not uh, made impermissible by the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I know that I did not say that so it's first for clarification so that way we understand. The first point I want to uh, um, highlight with regards to this question and any question and I find this common with my videos and I've seen this many times with scholars that the people hear what they want to hear that they're not careful and listening. So I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to be very cautious about speaking about something or something someone said without really listening and over and over if it requires that for you to gain a proper understanding uh, of what they said. So that way you don't distort what they said or misunderstand what they say. And this is very important, and I'm just going to give you an example, not to go off the topic, but so many times I remember this in especially Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, in his durus, that there would be, he would, the Sheikh would give, talk about a very in-depth issue in Aqidah and Creed, maybe about takfir or something. And then at the end of the dars, when the questions come, people would ask questions as if they were not even present in the dars. And this happens all the time to many of the Mashaikh you wonder where those people were. Were they in the same room? Because they asked questions. The sheikh covered it in detail, you know, or they asked questions that are, are, are strange or totally distorted and say, well, sheikh, are you saying that da, 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 da? No, I didn't say that. And I gave you the delil and I gave you the tafsil, the, the details. So this is very important to listen carefully. Uh, so that way you don't just jump and quick, and I'm going to give you another example. I recently, someone sent to me uh, a clip of a brother that I know, a Talib al-Ilm from Medina, uh, that's a da'i, an imam now. Uh, you know, and they were saying, you know, kind of criticizing what the brother said. And I listened to a few minutes, although I did hear some things that uh, I thought were a bit strange or, or need some clarification, but by listening more to what he said, I understood what he was saying in his point of view, even if I disagreed with some of it, but I understood, and that comes from being just, and this is even with Ahl bidah that you should listen 
to what they say and don't just cut and paste and say, oh, he said this, he hates Akida or something like this, but rather you have to look at the context of everything he says. Then you will get a, a stronger grasp, whether that's an issue he made as a mistake in speech or it's an issue of his minhaj, his methodology, which is consistent and going astray. Let's get back to the question at hand. So that's something I wanna be careful, we wanna be cautious is make sure that we listen carefully so that way we understood what has been said. So I did not say that it's impermissible, but what I said and what I'm trying to convey is that when a brother is looking for a wife, that he should make sure she is uh, uh, suitable. Likewise, the women should be looking for suitable men, meaning that if she is a Salafi woman, she should not marry an Ashadi man because the women tend have a more of a tendency to follow the creed or the methodology or the way of the men. This is their, their nature. So in that situation, a Salafi woman, that wouldn't be befitting. That wouldn't be uh, something which would be good for her deen and it could be haram, but we'll leave that to the ulama to make those ahkam, to make those judgments. So with regards to a man marrying a sister who doesn't cover or something, if he believes that she is not going to change, that she's very obstinate, in this case, no, do not. Do not. If she's very strong, she's very strong on on her, her, her way of thinking and she doesn't seem at all open, then no. But in a situation as was mentioned, number one, uh, see, you're very open. This questioner is very open uh, to uh, to uh, be on the book of the Sunnah. That's that's the first thing. So this is a totally different scenario, meaning that if a person in this situation, then of course, and she may not be Salafi, so to speak, or what have you, in her her methodology. Maybe she has some akhta in her methodology and understanding some issues, but she's open to the truth. Then in this situation, this is a different situation. In this situation, in the law, there's khair in this, and that, because the point is, is being open to the truth. Another point I want to mention with this question is when a person says uh, that they are a person who wants to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and become Salafi. Salafiyah is not a clique or a group or a hizb. So this is very important for us to understand. It's not a, a particular group, a, cri a clique, or a cult, or anything else, but rather it is a methodology. So if you are already following the book and the Sunnah, or you're striving to follow the book and the Sunnah, according to the methodology of the Salaf, you are Salafi. You, that's already a case. You don't need a card. Uh, you're not a card-carrying member, nor do you need my authenticity, nor do you need this one's authenticity, but rather you need the authenticity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we've mentioned countless times on Ibra bi haqaiq, laysu bi musamiyat, that the proof or the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So it's not important that you just claim the name of Salafi, but it's important that you're really trying to follow the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Sahaba This is what it means to be Salafi, that you are striving to follow that minhaj. You are trying to uh, avoid other manahaj, other ways which cause you to deviance. So that's very important to understand. So I hope that that's, that's clear and uh, I don't think much else needs to be said, and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us all with ilm al-nafi, ruskin tayyibu, ilm al-mutakabili, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.